Welcome to The Wonders of Watercolour, I'm Ray Campbell and today we are going to be painting a dahlia using watercolour. Just a few colours today and we're going to paint this in easy to follow steps. As you can see, I've done my outline already here and I've swatched out a few colours that I'm going to be using today from this little set. These are from Deep Deep Light, um, just using these colours that you see in the palette. But don't worry if you haven't got these, I will give you alternatives as we work through. I've done an outline like this and I will put the pencil outline that you can see on my page here at the end of this video along with the reference photograph so that you can join in with me. You can screenshot it and print it out that way or you can have a vision that looks like this delivered directly to your inbox from our free version of Patreon. Um, it won't cost you anything and I'll tell you about that later on. So you can print it out this way and then transfer it onto your watercolour paper. Okay, but for now, let's get on with our first wash and I'm going to show you how to paint this in easy to follow steps. So this watercolour tutorial is suitable for everybody. So it doesn't matter whether you're new to watercolour painting or whether you've been painting for a little while, you can join in with us because I'll be showing you this step by step. You can see here the little swatches that I've made of the colours that I've got in my palette here. All the materials that I'm going to be using today will be linked in the description box underneath this video so that if I am going too fast for you and you want to check them out for yourself, everything will be linked underneath this video. I'm using paints from Deep Deep Light today, just a few colours, Bark, Ultramarine Rose, Rose Hip Forest Green, Cranberry and Permanent Yellow Light and I will be giving you alternatives as we work through. You don't have to go out and buy them but I do have a discount code and I'll tell you that later on. I'm going to be using some brushes for my own set. We launched these with Craftamo uh, last year and we're on our second release and we've still got a few sets left if you're interested in checking those out and I will link like I said everything underneath in the description box for you to check out. So let's go on with our first wash. Now watercolour is all about building up our layers so when we're looking at this beautiful dahlia you'll notice that on the leaves you'll see this kind of pinky tone on the tips and then we go into this orangey yellowy tone so we need to get that in first of all so let's just grab some water I've got a jar to the side here a little puddle in the middle and then we're going to just do a couple of puddles in the wells as you can see I'm going to start off by mixing ultramarine rose this is a pinky sort of purpley color you can see here if you don't have this, you could use something like a cobalt violet would work just as well with a tiny bit of permanent rose. You just want that kind of pinky hue. Or you could just have permanent rose on its own. That would work just as well. So we've got that colour there. And the other colour I'm going to add, first of all, would be I have cranberry, which is this kind of lovely, ready, pinky colour. And you could use a watered down version of perhaps crimson, something like that would work just as well. And then I'm also going to have rose hip. If you've purchased my set from Deep Deep Light called Raised Blooms Palette, um, that's one of the colours that you'll find in here. It's rose hip, it's a beautiful yellowy orangey colour. Um, it's very vibrant and very strong. So we've got three nice colours here to start with. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this pinky tone that we see on the tips of the petals. I'm going to be working so wet on dry, which means I'm going to be applying the pigment straight onto the watercolour paper. The paper that I'm using is a rough texture. This is from my book. Um, this is in a kind of sketchbook. It's about A4 size. So just for context, so you can see what I'm talking about. So straight onto the watercolour paper using my number eight brush. We're going to work this petal by petal straight to the pencil line like this and working it down. So straight to the line. Once I get to this point, I'm going to pick up the other color, which is cranberry, and I'm just going to drop that in. The switches in color are very subtle at this point, but it is important that we get this first wash on. This makes it look really natural because you can see one colour kind of blurring into the next. And I'm going to take this colour to the base of that petal, like I said, working one at a time. And once I've got those two in place, I'm going to just pick up a tiny bit of the rose hip and I'm just going to drop that in like that. 
and then just let it do its thing. So this gives me a good basis on which to build the other petals. I'm going to leave this one next because I don't want that to bleed into that one. So we're going on to this one as the next one. Again, start off with the Ultramarine Rose. Ultramarine Rose is one of the colors that's in my palette with Deep Deep Light. So if you have bought that, you'll find it in there. But you can use any pink tone really if you want to. You could add any pink with a bit of purple perhaps. So once again, the pink goes on first. And I do love these paints from Deep Deep Light. Um, I've been working with the brand for quite some time now and they're very, very special handmade paints. So if you do want to uh, check them out, like I said, I will link them in the description box underneath with a discount code so that you can get 10% discount with, your, with all of the paints from that brand. So you can check them out later on. But like I said, we're all about have, having everybody join in here on this channel. So if you, you can use whatever colors that you have. And if you are struggling to match them up, let me know in the comments and I'll help you out. So you can see me here picking up those colors again. We want that variation. Taking off the excess on my kitchen paper, just slightly off camera there, and just blending that in. And next we're going to do, let me see. Let's go to this one. Same process. We've got this lovely purpley pinky tone. So every week here on YouTube, we provide you with free full length tutorials. They are, um, they're in real time where possible. So we won't be sending you over to Patreon to watch the rest of it. We're all about um, getting everybody painting over here. So if this is something that you like, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell notification so that when I upload new videos, you'll be uh, contacted and you won't miss out on any content. Right, so let me mix out a little bit more of the Ultramarine Rose, this beautiful pinky, pinky tone. And we'll go on this one. In the photograph that you can see on your screen, this is slightly cropped. So I'm just going to have to make up that shape. So straight on with that pink. Petal by petal. We can take it as far as there and then go in with a cranberry. Take off the excess and we have a nice variation. It has bled into that because it's still wet, but that's okay. And I'm going to just add tiny bits of yellow. This is called um, permanent light yellow, I think, is it? Permanent light yellow. I'm going to add that to a bit of that color there. So this can go on here. You could use cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow, anything like that would work just as well here. Back to the pink and just drop that in. Separate puddle. So yeah, you could use any, any yellow color. This is a very vibrant yellow. Um, I really like it. And I had it in my set. So I drop that in. The key is to just get everything looking different. So back to that color there. This little section is a slightly different color. So just keep an eye on the colors that you see and how they change. And again, we've got this more yellowy color at the base. I'm just picking up that mix I've just done, letting it bleed into that color. We get a nice variation there, which is what we're looking for. With the color that's left on my brush, I'm just going to take it over here. Just pattern it around all these darker colors. And back to that pink, which has now become slightly muddy, slightly discolored with the other color, but that's okay. Just pop that on. So you can see how by adding these different variations in tone, it starts to look more realistic to start with. Um, I've actually noticed, I've made a mistake here. This is actually a leaf. So what I'm going to do is use my kitchen paper just to press that off. Okay, that should be green. <laughs> 
we all make mistakes. Okay, not to worry. Um, I could use my blender brush to lift off the rest of it, but um, because I'm going to be painting over it with a darker colour, that's okay. And if you spotted that, you should have been shouting at me down the camera. Okay, <laughs> so not to worry, we can go, this bit here is the pink bit that I should have done. Okay. So just work around, add a bit of that other colour. And then this is going to be darker, so it doesn't matter. I bet you were all screaming at me, weren't you? Don't do it, Ray. Um, and then we've got these lighter kind of pieces here. This is also a leaf, and we're just going to go on here for ease with a lighter colour, like that. These we're going to tackle separately, and just work around bit by bit. I'm going to let this dry. We've got this bit here is more of a lemony colour, so I'm just going to get what's left of my brush there, bring it down onto these two. But be careful because you don't want them to bleed into those colours. I have gone slightly outside the pencil line, so I'm going to use my blender brush. Let me zoom in so you can see. Um, this is a curved brush as part of my set from Craftamo. It's got a flat, it's got a curved tip rather than the flat ends that you normally get with eradicators or um, those kind of brushes. So you can just get into the corners or the right up to the pencil line with this one rather than um, you know, that flat surface that you get that doesn't really cut it for me. So I'm just going to get rid of that and let that dry. And then I'll come back and do the top section. With the petals now dry, we need to think about the section at the top here. Now you'll notice that they have a yellow undertone and then they turn into these gorgeous, bright, fiery colours. So we need to get that yellow colour in first because with watercolour, we work from light to dark and we layer the colours up glazing one colour on top of the other to create the colour that we need. It will all make sense. So first of all, we're going to add the yellow colour. And as I said before, so the colour that I'm using is permanent light yellow. So we'll just take a tiny bit. We don't need very much of this because it's very, very bright. So and to that, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of rose hip because I just want to take it down a little bit. You could use something like an Indian yellow would work very well if you've got that kind of colour, that sort of that kind of yellowy orange. This colour, I'm going to take over everything. In fact, I'm going to switch brushes and use a smaller size brush. I'm going to use my number two size brush. Again, this is from my Craftamo set. If you have got this set, this is the brush that's kind of my everyday smaller sized brush. Let me just move my props out of the way. So I'm picking up this colour. So it's a mixture of rose hip with a tiny bit of the yellow and I'm going to take this all over these little sections. Make sure that this is totally dry. I've left it about 10 minutes um, for this to dry in real, in real time. It would take about 10 minutes um, based on the environment that I'm in. You don't want this colour to bleed into the pink tone at all, so it has to be absolutely dry. So I'm just taking this over the central part using my number two brush. As I said in the intro, all of the materials that I'm going to be using today, I'll have linked in the description box. I'm using a rough surface paper. It's a not surface or cold pressed paper today, just because I really like the texture and it makes application really easy. So this is from Etcher and it's in a little sketchbook that I, I really like this paper. It's, uh, it's good quality, it's 100% cotton and it just makes application really easy. So just going to add this on, just keeping an eye where I'm going, just taking it over these one by one, yellow all over. So the yellow colour is the colour that we see underneath these bright, fiery, orangey tones. So this is just yellow with a tiny bit of the rose hip, or you could use Indian yellow as an alternative. We're just using a few colours today, and from these few colours we've swatched out all these glorious shades there that you can see. So deep, deep light um, are handmade Latvian paints. And as I said at the start, you can have a 10% discount of these. Um, and I will link all the colours that I've used in the description box underneath, as well as um, you can use that for all their paints. So if you wanted to treat yourself to something rather special, you could try that. So I'm adding cranberry. 
with a tiny bit of rose hip and cleaning my brush. And while this paint is still damp, I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. I'm going to take a tiny bit of the cranberry and rose hip and I'm going to start to drop this in to one or two of them like this, just on the base and keep the top nice and clear. In fact, I'm going to switch to my other brush, which is number four from Craftamo. And this is the one that's got a really fine point and it's great for doing um, sharper work. So if you're looking for something that's got a really good tip, then this is the brush to use. We're going to put this on the base like this. We're going to make this nice and easy, this tutorial. So no stress and it's suitable for everybody. So it doesn't matter if you've not painted before. And like I said, a lot of times um, when you're new to watercolor and you want to give it a go, I think the, it's getting started, isn't it? Which is why we provide you um, with all the outlines and references that you need. The reference photograph that you see on your screen, I'll put that at the end of the video as well as over on Patreon for free so that you can print it out yourself and join in with us. We're all about getting everybody painting. So again, I'm just taking a tiny bit of that cranberry. To that, I'm adding a little bit of the ultramarine rose. And again, I can go in now one by one and just adding a bit more detail to these. So it's building up the color as we work through. I'm going to do a couple of these to show you. And then we'll wait for it to dry and do the rest. So you can see already that we've got that variation of color and get it on. Just put the paint onto the paper and don't be frightened of it, you know. I'm always here to help you, by the way. If you've got any questions, do drop them in the comments below and I'm always here to help you out. So cleaning my brush in my tiny little puddle, pattern on my kitchen paper that's slightly off, off shot there, off camera, and I'm just going to use that brush to blend in the color to the tip, but not all the way because we want to reveal some of that color at the top. So we get that color on and then we're just going to let it sit and dry completely and then we'll tackle this next. Let me zoom out for you. So this is what we're looking at at this point. So we need to get the colors into this section here next. But before I do, let me just talk to you a little bit more about this reference photograph that I showed you. So if you don't want to draw it freehand, which of course you're welcome to do, the traceable that we provide you looks like this. This is the digital version that you will find over on Patreon. I'll put the pencil version that you see here on the end of the video in case you don't want to join Patreon for free, but why wouldn't you? It's absolutely free. And you'll get these delivered to your inbox once a week. It saves you scrolling through to get the outlines and you'll just print it out. And on the back, I usually just carbonize it with, some, uh, with a, a simple pencil, an HB pencil, and then just trace it down that way and you'll get them delivered totally free. It makes it a lot easier to start watercolor painting uh, when you've got that clean outline down on the paper before you start. Now, it would be remiss of me not to tell you that we do also have paid membership levels on Patreon. Of course we do. Well, we have exclusive content. If you're thinking about leveling up your painting, you won't find any of the YouTube ones over there. Of course, these are full length anyway. But if you wanted something a little bit more special, a bit more in depth that's written just for you as a patron of mine, then uh, let's just check out what you get. When you join Patreon, you will have access to exclusive content that you just won't find here on YouTube. Whether you're a seasoned artist or just dipping your brush into botanical watercolor, you may want to join us here on Patreon where the magic happens. And with Patreon's new collections tab, it makes accessing the tutorials super easy. When you join us here on Patreon, we dive deep into the art of botanical watercolors from vibrant blooms to fine detail and I'm here to guide you every step of the way. We have three membership levels to suit your skill and budget, and we even have a mentorship and coaching level. So if you're serious about developing your skills, then this could be the level for you. And now you can join Patreon for free, which will give you access to all of our YouTube traceables, which will be delivered weekly to your inbox. So no more scrolling through for the images. So if you are ready to embark on a watercolor adventure, unlock exclusive content and join a community that celebrates the beauty of botanicals, hit that join button, which I will link in the description. You can join and leave any time. 
And of course, we've got that mentorship level where you get one on one time with me. And it's a way that you can support my channel if that interests you. OK, let's stop talking and get on with this. Let's look at the stem and the bit that you see going on here. You can see the lovely mixture of colours that I've got here. Um, I've mixed up bark with a little bit of forest green. Now, forest green again is in my raised blooms palette. So if you've got this set, you'll find that here. So if you've got my set of paints from Deep Deep Light, you could use Mirabelle instead of the yellow that I've used today. And Mirabelle will give you that lovely kind of yellowy orangey tone that we've got there with the rose hip, of course, and Mayan instead of the um, cranberry. But, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly the same colour as long as you're working in the same tones. Or, of course, you can use whichever colours that you want to. But just from these six colours alone, I've achieved this gorgeous little swatch card by mixing the colours together to see what array of colours that I can get. You don't need to go out and buy an awful lot of paints when you're starting out. Um, I would say if you're talking about, you know, the paper is the most important thing. You will get better results with inexpensive paint if you've got the right paper. Try to go for 100% cotton if your budget allows. And even if you just buy one or two sheets of it just to see how it performs, just try it out because it really does make a difference. So to go in first of all with forest green. If you don't have forest green, you could use something like a perillion green with perhaps a tiny bit of sap as an alternative. So we'll get that in. You can see the kind of color that it is there. I'm going to add to that bark. So bark would be this color here. Um, it's a granulating color. It's got a bit of green in it. Um, as an alternative, you could use, I don't know, something like a Van Dyke brown, okay? So we'll get that on there. Again, I'm going watery to start with because I want the paint to be buildable. I'm going to my number two brush again, and I'm going to take this color over this section here, straight on to the paper. It could even go under here, but let's get it on first of all. Let's put it on, use my number two brush for this, making sure that I take it in the right area this time. Just gonna add a smidgen more green. And just coming down. I think I'm going to switch to my number eight brush actually in a minute. So, you know, watercolor is about layering your paint. And when you start your painting, you're looking to see, you're looking to see if you can work out the colors that are underneath. So I'm going to be showing you every step of the way here on the Wonders of Watercolor. So if you're new or you're nervous about painting, don't worry. You can just follow along and, you know, just have fun with it, right? If you are enjoying this video, could I ask you to hit like underneath? Um, there's a little like button underneath there. If you could just hit that like button, it's a way of telling YouTube that you're happy with what I'm doing and that you're enjoying this video. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of yellow to that. So we've got a bit of variation there on this one. Working straight onto that watercolour paper and using my number two brush. And then I'm going to take the yellow that I've got here and to that I'm going to add the pink and the other colour there. So we've got the yellow colour with a tiny bit of that red and a tiny bit of the pink. So you want this kind of muted-y, mustardy kind of tone. I'm adding some water because I want it to be diluted. We're bringing that down the stem, which we're going to be building up a little bit later on. You can see the colors that I'm picking up there from my palette. My number two brush straight onto the watercolor paper. And we've already got the basis of a really good solid base on which to um, build up the colours a little later on. So I'm just mixing these colours up, taking it down the stem like this. Remember all of the materials I'm going to be using today will be in the description box. You can check them out and if you want to use my discount code Deep Deep Ray that you see on your screen right now, you can get a 10% discount from the paints that I'm using from my lovely friends over at Deep Deep Light. Um, of course, I'll go on and I'll keep saying it. You don't have to go out and buy them. Um, but if you did want to treat yourself, then use that discount code. You'll get a 10% discount and it's totally worth it because I'm absolutely um, crazy about these paints. 
I've been working with the brand for um, a little while now and I really love them. So I'm picking up that mixture there of cranberry and I'm just dropping it on the outside edge so that I've got a little bit of variation already to work on as I'm waiting for this to dry. We've still got a bit of area here untouched with that colour, but just take a moment to look at this because we've got this gorgeous soft pink and you can see the difference that that colour makes by putting in that ultramarine rose on the top. It gives it this really natural kind of soft look. If we'd put a solid colour on, it wouldn't have worked. But I do feel we need to add a little something here. So let's just go back to cranberry and the other colour that we've put on here. So we can get that on. So this is cranberry and a little bit of rosehip. Around this little section. And I think that's pink anyway. So cleaning my brush and just blend that out. We've still got to build up these one by one, but it is important that we let everything dry beforehand. I'm going to put the right colour on here now because I did mess that up before. So we can just paint over that error. So you can see it didn't really make a difference in this instance. So I'm allowed to make mistakes as well. So you can see how I rescued that fairly swiftly in real time there. And whenever I make a mistake, I do say I did it on purpose. So show you, you know, that um, even as a professional artist, I make a mistake. <laughs> it happens, right? It does happen. But it's OK because we've we've sorted it out. So I'm just taking another layer of that over here. I'm adding a little bit more bark to that mix. And now I need to be patient and let this dry. It will take about 10 minutes, something like that. I want it to be totally dry. But again, before I do, another bit of bark. And I'm taking bark to the outside edge here while it's still damp to let it do its thing. Same here, just dropping in bark into that damp paint. And also here, cleaning my brush. And then with that damp brush, just blurring it out. This is a different colour, this bit that's still white. We're going to tackle that in a bit. So that's our first layers. And now we've got a solid foundation on which to build this gorgeous dahlia flower. I'm going to let this dry. Come back for our second section. So here we are on the next section. Everything's completely dry now. So the one thing that's kind of jumping out at me is this little bit here. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of whatever light colours on my palette. I'm not going to be too fussy here because I just want you to add a lighter colour. You could put, you saw me there, just pick a tiny bit of the yellow with a tiny bit of whatever was left in there just to get any colour on there to create that soft colour. And again here, a tiny bit of yellow watered down for this bit that's coming down underneath this petal here or this sepal rather here. So the thing we need to focus on now is building up the colours that we've got in place because it is looking a little bit flat, even though we've got that variation here and there. I'm going to start off by mixing the same colour as I did to start with, which is the ultramarine rose. Or, uh, yeah, ultramarine rose. And again, just a little bit of that colour there. And we've already got the other colours in, so we can start to utilise those now and build them up. Again, one by one as we work through. Now, looking at this one to start with, I'm going to be working on this one first, but because I've got this colour mixed up and I can absolutely see, we've got this ultramarine rose colour on the top of this part here. So I'm going to put that in now. Straight onto the paper, wet on dry, and just building up that other layer. So going on to this one, now we're going to be using the reference photograph as a guide. So the colors I'm going to be putting on aren't exactly the same. They're just going to give you an idea of how to build up your colors. You can see I've got cranberry here, rosehip with cranberry there, and we're just going to be switching between these colors. I have on my brush, I'm using my number two size for my set, and I'm just going to start to go in and add a bit of variation just here and there putting it on and just following a few lines kind of down. We've got this pencil line here, so we can work around that. We've got a line coming up here. I'm going to mix some more color actually. So make sure that I've got enough mixed up. So we can see where we've got these curved lines coming up. We can just follow that and just put them in. 
just build them up. Keep it nice and natural. At the base, we're much darker, so we can go in with the cranberry, on with the cranberry, and we put this straight onto the paper now. So straight into the base like this, and come up into that section, straight onto the base. We've still got that lovely underlying tone of the rose hip. You can add some of that for variation if you want to. You can see how you can just mix those together, together like that. This bit is actually lighter on the photograph, but I'm not doing that for simplify, to simplify it. Once I've applied that colour, cleaning my brush in the puddle of water, and patting it on my kitchen paper that's slightly out of shot, and just blending that in with my brush. So we've got a nice transition between these two colours, okay? You can already see the difference that that's made. And if you wanted to add a bit more definition, you can go in with a mixture of those two colours and add that in as well. Slightly gone outside the pencil line there. That's okay. And again, just blend it in with your brush. Um, again, I'm going to take a mixture of these two colours and put them straight on. Just here and there, around that section on the base where we've got these lines, and we have this line coming up like this. Cleaning my brush and then back to that pink colour and putting this on again. Letting it blur into the colour that we've just applied. You can leave a little gap here if you want to, if you're feeling really, really brave. You can just leave a little negative space between these two and take that into the edge where it's lightening up at the top. And then on the base of this one here, go back to the cranberry mix and work around. Leaving a little gap there of that negative space. You can go as vibrant as you want to. Let's look at this one. You can see the colours that I'm picking up onto the base. This time it's not a solid colour, so what I'm going to do is work around this sort of sepal or beginners of a petal here, and then take the colour up, leave a gap, up, leave a gap, up, leave a gap, back to the pink, and again leave a little gap between these so that we've got this kind of stripey effect. You can go over that, it's going to drop in where you've put that colour. This is gel to marine rose. And you've got a nice shape there. Okay, you mix up some more pink. And again, we've got this kind of shape and a little gap. And then we fill in the gap um, with a little bit of a yellowy, orangey colour and paint that on. This one, picking up the cranberry and the pink. And again, just add some lines. We've got a darker line coming up here. And then we have a curve coming around to give the idea that this petal is curved. Okay, so coming around, cranberry, If you haven't got cranberry, like I said, you could use any watered down red. You could use it with a little bit of um, something like a permanent rose, maybe. Don't want to take it too far up because you don't want to lose that pink colour. This is the kind of, I don't know, it's a funny kind of yellowy orangey colour. So we'll put that in again. Lots of water added to that. I don't want to go on that yet because it's still wet. We've actually got another little thing there, so we're going to work around that like that. Cleaning my brush. I don't want that colour to be too strong, so we're just blurring that out. Again, we've got this negative shape here, so we want to make it as simple as possible. And again, just adding tiny bits of pink to this. To the tip only. Um, we don't want to take that solid colour into the inside edge there. I want to keep it nice and light. So you can see how we're building this up nice and slowly. This one again, going back to that pink colour. 
and this time we can add a bit more detail around that negative space. And again, we can now go over some of these lines. So you can slow down this video if you want to, if I'm going too fast for you, remember. You can slow it down. You can rewind it, you can watch it. Make notes. I don't know. I used to love making notes when I was learning to paint. It's kind of how I did it. So just add a bit of cranberry to the base. Keeping these colors nice and natural. Like that. This needs to be darkened up. So I'm going to use that mixture of bark with the, um, with the forest green. And I'm going to pick up the remainder of that yellow and a bit of that pink. So we've got this kind of weird shade going on. But I do feel that we've got this kind of mixture of all the colors here coming into this section. And then cleaning my brush and just blurring that in like that. Nice and easy. Get rid of any white bits. Same here. Um, I don't know what color you'd call it. So it's just a mixture of everything. And just to, call, just to create this kind of color that we can't quite see there. And there's also a little bit underneath there. So now we've got the second wash on letting it dry and now we can see what's going on here. So I'm going to my number four brush again. The reason I'm choosing my number four brush is because, okay, you can see, you can get a nice strong detail with this brush. I'm going to take cranberry, the cranberry mix here. So we've got a little bit of the bark mix with a little bit of the cranberry mix here. And I'm going to use this color to go on the outside edge of this stem. You can see the colors that I'm just varying as I work through. If you've got any questions, do ask me in the comments. Always happy to answer your questions. Do take advantage of the free outlines over on Patreon, by the way. As I said, this, they are completely free. You don't have to join our paid membership level. I mean, we'd love you to. But you know, these are completely free, no obligation. If you're wondering why I'm giving them to you for nothing, I want you to join in with my tutorials. Um, and not everybody enjoys drawing freehand, okay? I know it was one of the things that I disliked the most. A lot of people enjoy drawing, um, but for me, it was something that was always holding me back when I was learning how to paint. And I felt um, it was putting me off drawing. So that's why I give them to you because it was something I struggled with. Not everyone does, and some people don't like tracing, but um, I am a great believer in doing what works for you. And if it works, do it. There are no rules with watercolor. Some people will say, don't use this color or don't use that color. And I'm like, you know what? If you like that color and it works, use it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't match or whatever, right? Use it if you like it. I've added some pinky tones onto this stem because I know there are pink colors in the petals and I like how it looks. Let's have a look at this. So back to this green mix. So we've got forest green with bark and now we can go over this line down the middle, leaving a negative space. That's this gap here and another negative space here. We're coming down, leaving another space there once you're happy with this placement, go over it. So we've got little lines in that sepal coming down. Going back, we're going to add a bit of bark to that color there. So we've got bark with ultramarine rose. Bark there. To that, I'm going to just drop this in on the outside edge again and also on the outside edge of this to brighten it up. Cleaning my brush, 
Remember, if you are enjoying this tutorial, please hit the like button below. It does um, let YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. And I'd love more people to see it because I would love to grow my channel. Um, we are providing you with free tutorials. And if you do like them, maybe share it. Uh, maybe you have a friend who likes painting and isn't aware that we do free tutorials here on YouTube. So please spread the word. Let people know if you're enjoying it to help me grow as a creator. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. You can see I'm leaving that I'm leaving that kind of greeny colour underneath, uh, taking that burgundy kind of strange brown colour that I've just mixed up, taking it over there. You can see how that's working. Going back to that mix there, which is the initial mix that I did. I'm going to add a bit more actually. I think it's not dark enough. Bark, forest green underneath. We can't quite see what's going on here, so we're just going to have to make it up. Applying that colour, cleaning my brush and then blending it out. We wanted a little bit of variation there, although we can't see. I'm imagining it's, um, it's not a flat colour, like this. All the brushes, all the materials, I'm going to link in the description box. And remember to stay until the end because I'm going to put the pencil drawing that you saw at the start, at the very end of this video. Um, it will just be the pencil version and not the digital one I showed you just now. So if you wanna grab that, then do stick around and I'll put the reference photograph there as well. So we're back to this funny yellow color. So we'll just have a little bit of this going on here. So you'll get the digital, the digital version on Patreon and the pencil version here on YouTube if you don't want to go over there and join up. Like I said, it's completely free, so take advantage of it. You're getting a free outline, I would do it. I'd, I'd grab it. If it's free, take it. <laughs> That's what I say. A free tutorial and a free outline. Yeah, I'm here for it. Okay, so get those on. And I think now we need to just add a bit more detail to here. So let's go back to Rosehip. This is our gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful orange and our lovely cranberry. Okay, let's take a look at these one by one. My number four brush. So this is rose hip. If you haven't got rose hip, another good color is the Schmincke. They do a transparent orange, which is a really gorgeous color. So I'm going to do the obvious ones first. So I'm taking this mix of rose hip with cranberry and we're going on to this sepal, sorry, the stamen and anther, I guess they would be, wouldn't they? And I'm applying this straight to that petal, using my number four brush, which is really sharp, and a clean puddle of water. Cleaning my brush, patting it dry, and then with that damp brush, I'm going to merge those colours together, keeping the yellow at the top. I'm not going to do this to all of them, but you see how I'm working between these? And again, you can go. Around, you can keep building them up because our layers have been lovely and watery to start with. It gives you that um, ability to blend the paint rather than it going muddy, which I know some people are frightened of with watercolor. It can do that. I'm varying the colors a little bit. I'm gonna add a bit of pink to some of these because they're not solid. Um, but because we're using this way of painting, you're not going to get that muddiness that you get with watercolour because we are applying light washes and it means that you're going to have a nice clean looking painting without it looking overworked, okay? And you can see I'm picking up those colours and just adding them on. Again, just working around one by one, just giving definition here and there. I'm not going to do all of them, but just so that you can see variation. Clean my brush and blending it through. I'm just going to go back to the cranberry and the pink. Zoom back out for you. And what I'm going to do is take the cranberry mix there and just outline one or two of the things that are standing out and looking like they need a bit of definition. So just here, for example, we've got bit more 
it's darker at the base, so just take that there. Go around there. And you can just add as much detail as you want to really make it your own, you know. So here we've got a line coming up. We've got quite a few of this sort of stronger colour. Just work around it. This is cranberry and the um, ultramarine rose again. This time slightly thicker with less water. So to give it that definition, okay. You can tweak it as much as you want to. And we have got, in case you're new here and you didn't know, we've got our own private Facebook group with the same name, The Wonders of Watercolour. And if you join us there, you can paint along with us on, uh, here on YouTube and put your finished paintings over on The Wonders of Watercolour and have some feedback from me and our fantastic members and our team who are there to keep our group in good working order. And we're a fantastic community over there. We'd love to see you. And we also have um, some of our older outlines over there as well that you can grab for free. We used to post them on the Wonders of Watercolour Facebook group before we had this other way of doing it, which is much, much better. But if you did want access to those older ones, then you'll find them over there. It's free to join. Just answer the usual questions and uh, you'd be let into the group and we'd love to see you there. And we'd love to see, we love to see your finished paintings and your works in progress and you can get some feedback all for free. I'm going to call this finished. Remember right at the end of this video, I'm going to put the outline and the reference photograph, the pencil versions, as I said before, and you can grab the digital ones um, over on Patreon. Remember, um, if you have enjoyed this video, please go to give it a thumbs up down below. Um, it's a way of letting you just know that you've enjoyed and I'll hopefully see you next week. In the meantime, let's take a moment to appreciate the finished painting. Thank you for watching. <laughs>